While Americans go about their day, wake up, eat, sleep, work, find times for their families, go to get whatever necessity needed, and following after any lust, over there in Venezuela, there's food shortage crises, agony, pain, distress, and collapse of a nation. Before I start, I want to say, call hello, y'all about Shemel Shai, Mashina Kabash, Shilak Yayam, and Shawnwa Kasad, Laha Bakiyar, which is the bonds to the apostles of Great Millstone and peace and mercy to the elect. Now, I was checking out uh, Apostle Tahar's recent video on Venezuela. And um, it led me to be to research, you know, or find check out different type of videos, and I found uh, a journalist who who's breaking it down in real simple terms of what's going over there on over there in Venezuela, and um, he breaking it down so simple that even the most simplest man can understand it. And when I do, I just want to give a just want to drop a quick scripture real quick, and then I'm gonna let his video play, and I'm gonna close the video out. Because this thing is getting real, man. Um, you know, why his brothers wake up in America and uh, able to still go to the store and take care of your families, pay your rent, whatever, you know, the things that uh, the average man need to survive. Are we still able to grab hands upon them things over there in Venezuela is, is more raw and rugged. And that's what we soon should have to be able to should have to face and that's going to lead me into the scripture of uh, Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 it says because thou hast kept the word of my patience I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which is to come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth now we understand that the the conclusion of the final hour of the hour of temptation is that the so-called white man is drunk is going to try to chip the whole planet earth even us brothers, but but also the the tragedy that's to come to America is gonna be a part of that test too. If, see if you're gonna crack when there's no food, when there's riots, when you can't you know you can't just cut on the water, your water your house and the water comes out. You know these are the things that we need to think upon and constantly stay in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim and Asha and pray that He may keep us safe because. Jeremiah 30 and 7 says there is a time of Jacob's trouble, but the latter part of that scripture also quotes that, but he shall be saved out of it. So there is hope. So without any further ado, I pray brothers enjoy the video and just stay in the spirit of Yahweh Shalom. 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 Venezuela is at the verge of a food crisis. This started years ago when they confiscated farmlands, confiscated companies and businesses and regulated the prices. Food is getting so scarce that there hasn't been flour available often and therefore you see these crazy scenes when it gets available. But now it's more and more empty shelves that meet the shoppers in the stores. There are mile-long lines to get to the stores, and sometimes when they arrive, there is nothing there to buy. This is a line in Anzuategui last Saturday, measured to be over a kilometer long. In our polls, about 60% of the people say that they're unable to find the food they need. And this has led to plundering, such as here in San Felix, or here when they try to break into store to find something to eat. This was in San Felix, Bolivar State, the other weekend, and one person was shot dead by the police in the riots. Here you see Valencia to the right, where they broke in and throwing things down from the shelves. Here is a plundering of a truck that was accident and, and loaded with live hens and chickens, so they just plundered that. Here was a collision with a truck carrying beer and they stopped and plundered it right in front of the police who did nothing to prevent. Here is another beer truck they plundered when it arrived to deliver the merchandise. 
since the price is regulated in Venezuela, it's much cheaper there than in neighboring Colombia. And therefore, a lot of the merchandise and food is smuggled over the border. Here you see bachiqueros, like, a, so, like they're called, regular people smuggling it over on, on uh, motorbikes on a plank over the river between uh, Venezuela to the left and Colombia to the right. In other parts of the border, the military itself is smuggling the food out of the country and contributing it to the shortage of food. The reason why it's got to be like that is because of a combination of several very unfortunate politics by the regime. These include that it's prohibited to buy in quantity. It's prohibited to store food at home, except for the immediate need. It's prohibited to transport food within the countries. You can't bring it from a region with a surplus to one with a deficit. And it's also prohibited to sell at market price because the price is regulated, as I say. And therefore, the manufacturer can't afford to bring food in. They are calling this a guerra economica, you know, economical war, but that's not what it is. This is just a, a idea that the communists have that private sector, like here, the owner of Polar, who makes the, the biggest company that makes food in Venezuela. The regime believes that they are waging some kind of war against them. That is pure fantasy. The real reason for these riots is that the regime is implementing communist politics that does not work, that leads to famine, that leads to hunger, that leads to disaster. We've seen it in country after country after country. And they repeat the same idiotic, mistaken politics here in Venezuela. And now it's getting to the point where 60% do not have food to eat in our polls. This may be very, very serious unless something is done about it quickly.